to Trading Lounge and the US indices for the 16th of March, starting with the NASDAQ 100 here. One of the things that we're looking at uh, here, obviously, is, um, well, wave three here, wave four here, and then one and two here, and going up for three and four here, and then going up for five um, of five here. Now, one of the problems with this is that this wave four here, uh, as pointed out by many, is um, overlapping wave one here for this. So I want to address that, and I'm going to do that by looking firstly at the NASDAQ comp. So with the NASDAQ comp here, this is a daily chart. So we can see wave one here and two here, and a nice strong third wave here. And the fourth wave here is quite a long way from this top of this move here. Okay. With the NASDAQ 100 on this case here, we are quite close to that there um, as, as such. Uh, so it is a bit closer in that regard. Um, but I'm still going to run with um, uh, this here as a wave four and basing that off the NASDAQ comp rather than the uh, NASDAQ 100 uh, or bringing that rather NASDAQ 100 into the into the fold. So uh, that said, um, let's just move on here. So what we're looking for here is uh, further upside uh, with, with this market here. Um, of course, this move here, we've got this in three waves here. So it's possible that we may end up getting some sort of um, <clears throat> pattern like this here, a 3-3-5 three, three, uh, regular flat pattern in all of this, or otherwise we'll just end up going uh, straight up in five waves uh, here for this. So with that in mind, we just cruise in here and have a closer look at this here. So I've been treating it, <clears throat> been treating it like this so far as wave one here and two here and then wave one and two here. So we can see that we're just really, this is the 13 to major trading level. So from the Fibonacci numbers, one, two, three, five, eight, and 13. And um, we don't really have support there yet, but that would be one of the things that we'd be looking for uh, in the next session to establish itself as a tested support on top of the 13,000, which I don't see as a problem because we've already tested it here and here, and we're going for it again here. And if you look closely, we can see this is one and two in here. So we are moving uh, up here. This little box here is the 50 and the 61.8%. So it is going to be a bit of a struggle around uh, in this area here. But once again, too, from the 13,000, we've got group one, which is the 100, 200, and 300. So once we get support on the 300 here, uh, that will also be on top of the 61.8%, that will make a better case for uh, heading higher. But as it stands so far, we'll just stay with this particular trend that we're in here at the moment and we'll keep an eye uh, on the volume. We're not seeing a lot of volume come into uh, in, into the play here in this move to the upside uh, with, with this. And uh, I noted that yesterday uh, with the volume on the, well, I think it's just easier uh, to look at it on the weekly chart uh, here. So we could see that, <clears throat> we could see that, uh, last week here was um, in this move up here it was on lower volume than these two bars of course it was a lot of volume compared to a lot of these but the the trick in reading the volume is the relationship between this volume this volume bar and the previous volume bar and of course of course the range and the open and the high uh, and the, the open and the close of course and the range within the bar uh, and it's also its relationship with the previous bar as well. So a little bit like reading music as well. One note follows onto the other. So, um, yeah, I'll just move that out of the way. Now, the S&P 500 here, we're not, we don't have any overlap here. So that's, that's okay. Uh, we do on the fourth wave here a little bit. Um, but what I want to address today is this, this larger picture here. Now, um, 
we're looking for this move to come up here to there's not i don't really see a problem with any of this uh, as such so from way four here we're looking been looking for a move up to four thousand and maybe beyond that a bit so um i've got it as wave five of five here now we can address it as the top of wave one or we can address it as the top of wave three and the reason that we get wave three here and i've brought this up before and it comes from from the russell actually so looking at the russell here just on a different uh, charting program this is the russell 2000 so uh yeah i'm just seeing if you can see all of that in there that's okay so that's all good oops a daisy so yeah from this wave four low down here i can count a nice five wave sequence to this point here the first of september and then wave two here and then we're in this really strong move to the upside here which is typically that you know at a, it's very appealing as a third wave to the upside and we're looking at one and two here and three and four and five so we're going to finish at the same time but with the russell we get the th we get um wave three here and then we'll be coming back for wave four this is also the same for bitcoin as well this chart by the way um so i think that we'll see um we'll see assets um um top at the same time but if wave if this is all of wave three here that's finishing off here and wave Wave five doesn't have to be as long and strong or, or anything as, as uh, wave uh, three or one, but it's still it's taken you know a good few months to get to wave one uh, here for this. So we'll have quite a fair fair bit of time to get to wave five, and it'll also depend on how complicated wave four gets as well. Uh, wave two was very simple, so it's probably likely that we're going to see the S&P at the 4,000 and this market here, which is the 4,000 is a medium level and at the Russell here, the 2,500, that's also a medium level as well. It's halfway between 2,000 and 3,000 as major levels. So medium levels are always halfway between those two. So it will be a number that um, will play out quite strongly, but this is where we'll see this wave four that can pull back to the wave four of one lesser degree. So uh, back into this space um, here for this roughly or 38.2 percent from wave two to wave three there but we'll get to that so we're we're heading above uh, the previous high here now for the Russell I won't break it down into an intraday uh, count here I'll do that with the S&P um, but the takeaway here is that well if this is wave three here and we're going to get a wave four here well then wouldn't the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 have the same uh, pattern roughly probably um so that's something that we'll need to bring into the fold in one way or another we're going to have a correction once we finish this move up here for for all of those indices and probably for most indices around the world <clears throat> so yeah anyway um so i think we need to start looking at the s p 500 as a wave three top now what that's going to do as you can see here we've got a nice big strong third wave here we don't have that for the nasdaq or for the s p 500 different markets the nasdaq has led to the upside and then the russell uh the smaller stocks took over uh that moved to the upside so they've been sharing the journey to the upside so we need to take all of these things into consideration so that's why I've got wave three sitting up here for the S&P here. Now that means that the wave one here, if I can just copy that, would sit over here for that. So you can see how short the wave three is going to be, is, is here for that compared to uh, the wave one here. So that, you know, that causes uh, some issues. But what that would really mean though, is that if we had just, let's just, finish this off here a little bit so if we put wave four here and then wave five up here then it's going to make the five the wave five up here quite short it needs to be if if this is going to be wave one here and wave two here and then we're going to be looking at wave three up here for this one here. Well, wave three from 
from here to here is really quite short, isn't it? So if I just take this up here and let's just take it to, we'll take it to 200, let's be a bit generous, shall we? Probably not the case, but um, close to it. So that means that, copy that, when we get wave four to come into play, well then wave five to the upside needs to be shorter than wave five. Oh, sorry, wave five here needs to be shorter than wave three. So this needs to be shorter than this leg here for that. So it could probably just play out uh, as an A and a B and a C wave here, and then coming up here for wave five being really quite short at that point. So it's going to be interesting that all of this here, um, as normal, we just, you know, we we look at these different ideas and then we just work through them. <coughs> so the main point of working through all of this is looking at this move through here. We, our job is to count five waves from this low here to this high here. Once that's finished, then we get out of our long tray and then we can short, but we just observe what's going on in, in here. We try to figure out, number one, is this going to be a corrective pattern? or is it going to be impulsive patterns? So that's going to take a little while to work out, but we'll get some short trades in there. Anyway, there's enough waffling on. Let's just uh, move in and, and look at this. I will be looking at stocks today as well, but I'll move through them a bit quicker because I've spent a bit a bit of time on the indices. So uh, from this wave four here, the wave three here, the A, the B, and the C for wave four, we've been looking at this as wave one and two in here. And then we're looking for wave three to touch on 4,000 and then wave four here and then wave five. So realistically, we could probably, well, we'll see when we get there, but um, our first level to the upside is the 100 and then the 200 and the 300 here, which is the top of, these are minor levels, and that's the top of minor group one at that point. So um, we'll be looking uh, in here for, for that. And just to break wave two to wave three down here, we'll go to the hourly chart. And a bit like this. So uh, we've been through all over this, but one and two and three and four and five for one here and two here, and then one and two here, and then one and two and three and four and five here for the third wave, the fourth wave, and going up for the fifth wave. This could actually be counted a little bit differently here as well. Um, let me just get this into perspective first. This wave four can pull back to this wave four and then we've got wave five to the upside here. We'll just leave that up there. It's possible that um, this hasn't counted very well in five waves in this little move here. So it's also possible that, just something we've got to work through, that will go a little bit higher here. It's also possible to have this here as wave three here as well. But either way, um, if we're not coming back for this wave four, we'll be coming back for this wave four. I need to do, I need to pull that apart on, I, I looked at it on a hundred ticks, but I need to look at it on a 20 tick or five tick and really break that down to see if I've actually got five waves in, in that particular structure there. Um, so yeah, just a bit unsure about which, which is which here. So anyway, the, the trick is in here. If you want to pull that apart, um, that needs to be, um, sorted out but in a nutshell we can expect the market to move up to here and then have an ABC pattern that can take us back uh, to the 38.2 percent or the wave falls of one lesser degree and then we'll be looking for five waves up into this space we'll just leave it at um, 4100 um, but the extensions in wave three here so that means that wave one here and wave five can be roughly the same as a rule of thumb. However, because when we're dealing with large numbers or working through large numbers, they tend to skew the market a little bit, the, the, the patterns. So we need to take that on board as well. It will be, it's easy for the market to be sucked up to this, but it's hard for the market to leave it until it's spent some time here at this particular level. Okay, that said, let's just have a look at some stocks here. So with uh, Tesla here, we're looking from wave three here, we're looking for an, as you know, and uh, we've got five waves down here for the A wave. And, and then we're looking back up for the B wave and down for the C wave here. And then we'll move up from that point. So we're still, excuse me, 
in this uh, section uh, here for that. We can look at that on the tick chart. <clears throat> I went into all the tick charts yesterday, so... Um, okay, so I need to get more data. So a little bit of a tricky one, this one, actually, just at the moment. So... I've got an A wave here, a B wave here, and a C wave here for this. We haven't finished in five waves here. Um, it's possible, I'll just come back to that. This, I may, I probably have this wrong. It probably counts better as one and two here, and one and two, one, two, three, four, five, the third wave, fourth wave here, um, fifth wave here, and then the fourth wave and the fifth wave. So it's probably, we probably got wave A sitting up here for this. Um, but what I did here is I looked at this here as an A wave here, a B wave up here, and a C wave down here for this B wave here. Anyway, I've got a, a, it doesn't feel right, and I've got some, I've got a bit of a problem here. But the other way it can play out is the five waves that we've got down here as the A wave, and then an A and a B and a C wave here for this. So it's possible for this to uh, play up here a little bit further, and then come down here for the B wave and then move up for the C wave here for this. Uh, we've been stopped out. We've got a small profit within all of this um, because I thought that we'd come down for the B wave after this five waves here and after correction here. Um, but obviously it wasn't the case and maybe I should have put the stop under here, but uh, we took that chunk of profit and that's that. And <clears throat> I can't cry over spilt milk. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Um, so, but anyway, whichever way we look at this, this B wave is not finished yet. So once I get a bit more information in, in here, I'll be able to figure out if this is um, the B wave coming down from here or we've got the B wave in place uh, here. So we're not ready to short it or to go long at this point with this. So just coming back into the daily chart here. So we've got a cleaner uh, picture for this. Um, yeah, you can see that the, the, we're not, we're just not there yet for this, you know. And when this finishes up here, the B wave here, it'll probably see the top of the equity markets at that point, and then they will pull down for their wave four. So then this will move down for this one here as well. And Facebook. So with Facebook, I've got two ways to look at this here, um, because if the equity markets top out, right, then it's likely that uh, Facebook will pull back down as well. So I've got it as an A and a B and a C wave here, uh, A, B, C, well, D and E wave here for this. Um, but we can also look at this as A, B, C, then an A and a B and a C for the D wave here and then down for the E wave here in three. So that will be another three waves that we need to play out here for this. A little bit laborious, but you know, if the, um, if, if the NASDAQ and the, the S&P are gonna to top out, well then a lot of these stocks are gonna come down too, aren't they? So that's what I'm thinking. So we might just put that in the background a little bit. So nothing really sort of going on here that that's, you know, nothing sort of special there. Uh, square, we definitely know that we're in a correction here because we've got five waves in the first leg here and then the B wave and then the C wave here. Uh, if this is going to get any bigger here, we may end up... Um, just pushing up for another high here and maybe I've got all of this count wrong here I'll need to go back and check it um, maybe we can go one and two here and three here and four here in line with the other markets uh, and then we have a much larger correction at that point with this market we are long here and we'll stay long we'll just look for um, I won't go to the tick chart at the moment for this but what we're looking for is support on the 250 here so let's just see if we get that um, because we've got three waves in the first leg here, that could be the end of it and we can go straight up or we're going to go into a flat 
correction, which all of this down here will become the A wave, and then the B wave here, and then the C wave down here, or we could move into a triangle pattern. But um, I've got to figure out, we need, I just need a bit more, a few more sessions to figure out what we've got, uh, what this is going to be here. Is it going to be an A and a B and a C wave into this space? Or we're going to see more of an impulse wave up here. But we'll stay long for the moment. We talked yesterday about taking some profit at the uh, 250, so you should have done that. And we'll just see how that sits there. very much like Tesla, Apple. So we've got from the top here, we've got one, two, three, four, five down here, and we're just still in the early processes of uh, the process of coming into wave B here for this. So once the, um, the S&P tops out, then we'll see probably this top, we'll see them all top together, and then we'll see, you know, we'll see a move down at that point. And this could get more complicated as well in this, But we'll see. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, I think we, because we've got five waves here, the, the trade really is the short trade coming down in this leg, which will be much the same as this leg. And nothing really to say about alphabet. We're just looking for another high here to, if I just remove this here and put this, It'll be more like that. Um, so we're still looking for another push up here. We've got a position down here with this still. So uh, just keeping the stop nice and tight here. We've taken a percentage here. So uh, we're locked in here again as a long trade. Um, but we'll just keep the stop out of the way. We should see it. This is accumulating in here. We should see it push up from that point. But um, what I mean, pushing up because all the other markets are pushing up. Basically, I haven't actually pulled that apart within in this space here as yet and uh, Amazon. So it should be interesting to see what Amazon does because as wave three here, we've got three waves here. <coughs> this could be counted uh, differently uh, in here as well, but I've just simplified it as an A and a B and five waves down for the C wave. So it's possible for it to push all the way up there, but it wouldn't be in line with, with what else is happening in the markets, you know? So what's happening in the markets is we're expecting a rally uh, and then another move down. So this can get a bit more complicated uh, here for this. We are long at the moment with this and we'll just keep the stop out the way. I will have a look at the intraday here. Oops, I don't need to do that. So this is this is the low so far. So we've got a position here and here. And we took this position here because this move up here would be an A and a B and a C wave to this. So any more, any new highs here would create this as an impulse wave to the upside at that point. So we'll just keep the stop below the 3000 and we'll just allow this to uh, play out further. But we'll, once, once the, um, the 100 becomes the tested support because that's what it's all about at the moment. Once that becomes the tested support, then we can move this stop up to cover costs on, on this particular trade. Uh, and then we'll look to see, we'll just keep an eye on it anyway. When we see the S&P topping out, then we'll have to close out a lot of these positions as well. Alrighty, I'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.